Good morning folks and family. This is Glenn again. And it's 4.51 a.m. on November 19th on a Monday. Hope everyone's having a great day. I mean actually on a Tuesday. I'm sorry, Tuesday. November 19th on a Monday. On a Tuesday rather. Yeah. Tuesday morning. Anyway, this is the Word for Today, Part 2 for November 17th, 2019. Let's go right into the Word today. I was working on uh, some stuff here uh, recently uh, on the 17th. And I was working on some other projects, and the Lord gave me this word in my mind. This word came to me on November 17th, about a minute before 11 a.m. Talk about the vexation of the Spirit. Vexation of the Spirit. So let's go into the definition of what vexation means. A vexation of the Spirit means the desire to have material things. And that everything is meaningless. To have a vexation means it means to have something that's in vain. So, in other words, you're wanting material things in vain. Okay, let's go into the book of the Ecclesiastes. It describes, <coughs> excuse me, it describes vexation in the spirit in several passages in the book of Ecclesiastes. So, chapter 1, verses 14, 17 through 18. Chapter 2, verses 11, 17, 22 through 23, and 26. Chapter 4, verses 4, 6, 16. Chapter 5, verses 17. Chapter 6, verse 9. Chapter 7, verses 3 and 9. And then finally, chapter 11, verse 10. Let's go into the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verses 14, 17, and 18. Okay, Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 14. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and indeed, all is vanity and grasping for the wind. Verse 17 and 18, And I set my heart to know wisdom, and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this is also grasping for the wind. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he increases in knowledge, increases in sorrow. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 11, 17, 22 through 23, and 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, 11, Then I looked on all the works that my hands had done, and on the labor in which I had toiled, and indeed all was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no profit under the sun. Verse 17, Therefore I hated life, because the work that was done under the sun was distressing to me, for all was vanity and grasping for the wind. Verses 22 and 23, For what has man for all his labor, and, his, and for the striving of his heart, with which he had toiled under the sun, for all his days are sorrowful, and his work burdensome, even the night his heart takes no rest. This is also vanity. Verse 26, For God gives wisdom and knowledge, and a joy to a man who is good in his sight. But to the sinner he gives the work of gathering and collecting, that he may give to him what is, who is good before God. This is also vanity and grasping for the wind. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 4, 6, and 16. Ecclesiastes 4, 4, Again I saw for, that all for all toil and every skillful work a man is envied by his neighbor. This is also vanity and grasping for the wind. Verse 6, Better a handful with quietness than both hands full together with toil and grasping for the wind. Verse 16, There was no end of all the people over whom he was made king, yet those who come afterward will not rejoice in him. Surely this is also vanity and grasping for the wind. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 17 Ecclesiastes 5 and 17, All his days he also eats in, he also eats in darkness, and he has much sorrow and sickness and anger. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 9. Ecclesiastes 6 9. Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of desire. This is also vanity and grasping for the wind. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verses 3 and 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 3. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by a sad countenance the heart is made better. Verse 9. Do not hasten your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 10 Therefore move sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh for childhood and youth are vanity. Okay folks and family there's a total of 32 verses all together that's, inclu that's including Ecclesiastes so the rest of these I'll go over Deuteronomy 28 20 2 Chronicles chapter 29 verse 8 Job 5 and 2 Job 6 and 2 Job 10 17 Psalm 6-7, Psalm 10-14, 
Psalm 31 9, Psalm 85 4, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 16, Proverbs chapter 6 verse 14, Proverbs chapter 12 verse 16, Proverbs chapter 15 verse 16, Proverbs 21 19, Proverbs 24 2, Proverbs 15 16, Proverbs 21 19, Proverbs chapter 24 verse 2, Proverbs 27 verse 3, Isaiah 9 1, Isaiah 28 19, Isaiah chapter 65 verse 14, the book of Jeremiah chapter 2 verses 27 through 28, Jeremiah 4 and 18, Jeremiah 7 and 19, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 11, verse 12, verses 14. The book of Mark, chapter 3, verse 5. And finally, Revelation 11, verse 10. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 20. Deuteronomy 28 and 20. The Lord will send on you cursing, confusion, and rebuke, and all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed, until you perish quickly, because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. 2 Chronicles chapter 29 verse 8. 2 Chronicles 29 and 8. Therefore the wrath of the Lord fell upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he has given them up to trouble, to desolation, and to jeering, as you see with your eyes. Job chapter 5 verse 2. Job 5 2. For wrath kills a foolish man, and envy slays a simple one. The book of Job chapter 6 verse 2. Job 6 and 2, Oh, that my grief were fully weighed, and my calamity laid with it on the scales. Job 10, 17. Job chapter 10, verse 17, You renew your witness against me, and increase your indignation toward me. Changes in war are ever with me. Psalm 6 and 7. Psalm chapter 6, verse 7, My eye wastes away because of grief. It grows old because of all my enemies. Psalm chapter 10, verse 14. Psalm 10 and 14. But you have seen, for you observe trouble and grief, to repay it by your hand. The helpless commits himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Psalm 31 and 9. Psalm chapter 31, verse 9. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye wastes away with grief. Yes, my soul and my body. Psalm chapter 85, verse 4. Psalm 85 and 4, Restore us, O God, of our salvation, and cause your anger toward us to cease. Proverbs 4 and 16. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 16, For they do not sleep until they have done evil, and their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 14. Proverbs 6 and 14, Perversity is in his heart. He devises evil continually. He sows discord. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 16. Proverbs 12 and 16. A fool's wrath is known at once, but an imprudent man covers shame. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 16. Proverbs 15, 16. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. Proverbs 21 and 19. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 19. Better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 2. Proverbs 24 and 2. For their heart devises violence, and their lips talk of troublemaking. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 3. Proverbs 27 and 3. A stone is heavy, and the sand is weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than both of them. Isaiah 9, 1. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1. Nevertheless, the gloom will not... Be upon her who is distressed, as when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward more heavily oppressed by her, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in the Galilee of the Gentiles. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 19. Isaiah 28 and 19. As often as it goes out, it will take you. From morning by morning it will pass over, and by day and by night, it will be a terror just to understand the report. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 14. Isaiah 65 and 14. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, 
but you shall cry for sorrow of heart and wail for grief of spirit. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verses 27 through 28. Jeremiah 2, 27, 28, saying to a tree, you are my father, and to a stone you gave birth to me, for they have turned their back to me and not their face. But in the time of their trouble, they would say, Arise and save us. But where are your gods that you have made for yourselves? Let them arise. If they can save you in your time of your trouble, for according to the number of your cities are your gods, O Judah. Jeremiah 4, 18. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 18. Your ways and your doings have procured these things for you. This is your wickedness, because it is bitter, because it reaches to your heart. Jeremiah chapter 7. Verse 19, Jeremiah 7, Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 9, verse 19. Do they provoke me to anger, says the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the shame of their own faces? Jeremiah chapter 11, verses 12 and 14. Jeremiah 11, verse 12. Then the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem will go and cry out to the gods to whom they offer incense, but they will not save them at all in the time of their trouble. Verse 14. So do not pray for this people, or lift up, cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry out to me because of their trouble. The book of Mark, chapter 3, verse 5. Mark 3 and 5. And when he had looked around them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as whole as the other. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 10. Revelation 11 and 10. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry, and send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Okay, folks and family, that's it. That's the Word for Today, Part 2, November 17th, 2019. That's the Word for Today, Part 2. November 17, 2019. Everyone have a great day. Take care of yourselves. Be blessed. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves. God bless you in everything you do. God loves you and so do I. Remember, Jesus is coming soon. Very soon. Today is your day of decision. Today is your day of salvation. Come to God through Jesus Christ. and He will never turn you away. Thank you for your time. Have a great, wonderful day. I love you all very much and I'll talk to you another time. Bye-bye for now. God bless you.